Oh my god, this one is just so important. Where? <laughs> In case you do not own your own equipment and you're going to have to book studio time, which you're paying for. And I think I attribute most of Legally Clueless's growth to consistency. At the beginning, with excitement, you can be like, way I can do an episode per day. <laughs> Shout out to the guys who do that. I cannot. Hi, so my name is Adelo Nyango and this is episode two of a series of videos I'm doing, just sharing knowledge that I have on podcasting, knowledge that I gathered while I was a radio presenter in traditional radio. So in episode one, I spoke about the microphones that I use to record my podcast and I got a lot of questions around the editing software that I use, but also questions from people who want to start a podcast but don't know what their podcast will be about. So I figured let's deal with the content first in this video and then the next one I'll tell you what software I use to edit. So in terms of trying to figure out what your podcast should be about, I think I'm just going to share six things that I kept in mind when I was trying to figure that out for myself. First thing which is very important to me is interest am i interested in this content that i want to create the reason it was important for me is because on traditional radio it's less about what the radio presenter wants and it's more about your what's popping what's trending be it in entertainment pop culture or in politics and things like that and when i joined radio i was about 20 years old and i was like yeah this is dope i get to meet celebrities be around music and all of that stuff and by the time i was handing in my resignation i was 30 years old um i had evolved i think i didn't resonate with about 80 percent of the content of the shows i was on i just didn't give a damn about that content anymore and <laughs> it's such an uncomfortable place to be in which is why when i started legally clueless i was like Ooh, number one i've got to be interested in this content i'm not creating from what do people want to listen to i'm not being driven by the target audience i'm very protective of myself as the creator and the creative and the host and the producer of this podcast so it's like yo are you vibing with this great <laughs> now we can do it now what's really dope about podcasts in the digital world is that there's a tribe for anything so whatever it is that you're interested in there are people who are interested in that thing as well and they will love your podcast for that Second thing I thought about um, is something that I guess traditional businesses do, which is look at their goods and services and think, what problem is it solving? So I was like, okay, fine. What problem do I have with the current content, especially audio content? I felt like in terms of traditional radio, it was too exaggerated. It's a performance. I felt there wasn't enough content that I could relate to as a human being and as an African. It just felt so plastic and full of fluff, right? And so I was like, yeah, <laughs> um, that's what I would love to do. And if I looked at it as a business, I would think that's the gap that it's, it's, it's filling in. And loosely, that's the problem it's solving. So you could look at your podcast in that view, or you could look at it as I'm going to do a podcast that is a source for knowledge on a particular topic, or maybe it's the one place somebody can come and learn a skill, learn a language, um, and that will be a problem you're solving. Oh my God, this one is just so important. Where? <laughs> I realized it um, and I think I attribute most of Legally Clueless's growth to consistency. And it's so tough to be consistent, I know. But you have to think about it in two ways. One, when you're trying to figure out what your podcast is going to be about, think about how consistent you can be in churning out that content. And I would suggest you look at it from like a year, right? And say, hey, will I be able to churn out content on this particular thing that I'm interested in consistently for one year? 
and then you're like hmm if it's one year i think i can only do one episode per month that means 12 episodes it makes it so much easier for you to be like aha so these 12 episodes need no 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 and that way you don't start your podcast and then in episode four you realize either you're out of content you know you have no direction or you're losing the consistency and that just means you're going to lose your audience you also need to look at consistency in a second way which is your own schedule what is feasible and at the beginning with the excitement you can be like way i can do an episode per day <laughs> shout out to the guys who do that i cannot or you're like i can do it every week or i can do it every second week or eh, the way my schedule is set up once a month is what i can handle you honestly need to be very honest with yourself about your schedule and what you're able to maintain because remember if you're doing it for a year you need to be able to maintain that for one year a lot of things will influence the consistency in case you do not own your own equipment and you're going to have to book studio time which you're paying for it helps to think about it for a year instead of saying okay i have enough tunes to pay for this one episode okay then what happens to episode two and three and four the fourth thing you need to think about is whether you'll need to collaborate so this interesting content that you want to make that you're really interested in you can be consistent about it it's filling in or solving a problem you now need to think do i need a co-host for this podcast or um can i do it solo you also have to think will i need to conduct interviews on this podcast who am i interviewing it's, if it's a niche podcast for a specific industry you may want to shortlist who these experts or whoever it is that you want to interview who are they have a list if it's more about you're interviewing celebrities actually start listing out who are these celebrities you're going to be interviewing the fifth thing is something that again i think i was more sensitive towards this because of my time as a radio presenter in traditional radio i got in when i was 20 was resigning when i was 30. i'd grown i'd evolved past this content so when i was creating legally clueless i think and even to date i mean it's something that i carry with me throughout i'm very sensitive to the fact that i'm growing as an individual as a human as a creative and so when i was creating what my podcast will be about i wanted content that will grow with me that will not stagnate and when i evolve i can still be comfortable i don't know why i'm doing that dance but i can still be comfortable within this content it's not going to be a space where the podcast is popping yes woo, it's dope but me as the host or the the producer or whatever i'm just like ah i'm so over this crap like <laughs> i just think my final days in radio were just so uncomfortable because i just didn't resonate with that content i think i had grown and evolved past it and then for some time i was forcing myself to enjoy it because i'm like but you're in this space and you used to love this space what is it now that you don't love it you know when it finally hit me but also you got in when you were 20 please madam you are 30. <laughs> 10 years trust that you've grown so the last thing to think about and i put it last for a reason is a target audience not because you know i do not value my listeners i really do but because i want my podcast to always remain true to the creative dna i don't want to start leaning on who's listening hey, what are they listening to most which episode bombard then now i start changing the creative dna too much you know what i mean so once you figured out what you're interested in who do you need to collaborate with to make it happen can you be consistent and all of that good jazz 
then you can be like, all right, who do I want to listen to this podcast and start thinking about, you know, their age, their gender, are they in the same country as you or elsewhere? Remember, podcasts are listened to on a digital platform, meaning you can reach anyone. I just think it's so magical. You can reach anyone. So it's important, I think, to think about your target audience for sure. But for me, because I, I just want this space to always be my happy place. I always want to be true. I always want to be as vulnerable as I can be on Legally Clueless. I always wanted to remain true to the creative DNA. And that's why I spent a lot of time trying to figure out that structure. And then I can be like, okay, who do I want to listen to this podcast? So those are the six things that come to mind when I think about where my mind was when I was figuring out what my podcast would be about. I'm pretty sure the list is longer than six things. <laughs> but those are the ones that come to mind. If you have any questions on podcasting, you can drop them in the comments and I'll make sure if I have enough knowledge to answer them. I will answer them in the next couple of videos. And if you want to check out my podcast, which I think you really should. I don't know why I sang that. <laughs> if you want to check out my podcast, Legally Clueless, there is a link to it in the description. If you're watching this on IGTV, just hit the link in my bio. Is there anything else that I need to say? No. I think I'm done.